Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to present to you just one problem. The whole lecture will be about one particular problem. Um, it's not an easy one. Uh, I would say it's challenging. It's very important for you to try it yourself first. So go to the notes to this lecture on unizor.com. And this is about evaluating sine of 18 degrees. So we have an, an angle of 18 degrees. And the problem is find out the value of the sine in, in radicals, actually. It's like sine of 30 degrees is square root of 3 over 2. So sine of 18 degrees is something which we can express in some good form. All right, so how can we approach this? Well, first of all, since I present this problem, it means it has a solution, and it, it, it's a solution which is not like going to a computer and find out what's the sign of 18 uh, degrees in uh, zero point whatever it is, or going to some internet site and, and find out. So I would like to derive the value of this particular um, sign uh, as as a logical um, as a logical conclusion of certain um, of certain statements which I'm about to make. So how can we approach this problem? Well, we obviously need to do some creative thinking. So what's so special about 18 degrees? Well, what's special is that um, 5 times 18 is 90. So it's kind of a 90 degrees, which is a very kind of a nice basic angle, divided by 5. Well, we know about the half angles, right? We can uh, find out the value of half angles or double angles. So we can probably manipulate this in some way or another. So, the first thing, which is, I would say, well, a guess or good creative approach to this is to realize that 18 plus 4 times 18 is 90. So, as I said, 90 is 5 times 18. So, this is definitely the true um, equality. Now, if this is an angle, and this is an angle, these are two angles which uh, together add up to 90 degrees, which means sine of 1 is equal to cosine of another. This is a fundamental, one of the fundamental uh, trigonometric identities. So, we are going to use it, which means sine of 18 degrees equals to cosine of 4 times 18 degrees. Or, if you wish, cosine of 18 degrees equals to sine of 4 times 18 degrees. So, both are true statements. And I'm going to use one of these statements by basically applying the formula for uh, sine of you know, sum of two angles um, to convert this into basically sine or cosine of 18 degrees. I can, I can do that, right? So let's apply twice the formula for um, sine of Sum. Now, you remember that, let me put it here, uh, sine of alpha plus beta is sine alpha cosine beta. Plus, um, uh, cosine alpha sine beta. Now, if alpha and beta are exactly the same thing, uh, so it's basically a sine of 2 alpha, 
then I can really put it this way. Two sine and cosine of alpha. And this is two alpha. So that's what I'm going to use with alpha equals to 18. So, um, on the left I will still have cosine of 18 equals, and this one is double 36, right? So, this 4 I'm basically dividing as 2 and 2. Uh, so it's sine of 2 36 degrees equals using this formula it's cosine 18 degrees uh, plus equals to 2 sine of 36 which is 2 times 18 and cosine of 2 times 18. Okay. So we reduced 4 times 18 into this. Now let's reduce even more. So the cosine of 18 degrees equals now this again is a sine of 2 uh, of double angle so it's 2 sine of 18 degrees cosine of 18 degrees right now cosine of double angle okay let me put it here again cosine of double angle is uh, this is the alpha plus alpha so it's cos, co cosine times cosine minus sine times sine so it's cosine square alpha minus sine square alpha which is the same thing um, I would like to have only sines and since cosine square is 1 minus sine square I can put it equals to 1 minus sine square of alpha. So instead of cosine of 218, I will have 1 minus 2 uh, sine square of 18 degrees. Now, look at this. 18, cosine of 18 degrees, I can reduce, right? Both uh, sides of the uh, equation I can divide by the same number, obviously not equal to zero. And now I have an equation, basically. 1 equals, four, uh, this is 4, uh, sine times 1, so it's sine of 18 degree minus 4 times 2, 8 sine and sine square it's sine in third degree of 18 degrees so I've got an equation actually if I will be able to solve this equation I'll find my sine of 18 degrees, right? well, a, a small complication this is an equation of the third degree the cubic equation, but we can deal with it. So, let's rewrite this equation in a little bit more typical format. We will add 8 sine cube and subtract 4. So, I will have 8 sine cube uh, of 18 degrees minus 4 sine of 18 degrees plus 1 equals to 0. This is the cubic equation which I have to solve 
to get the sine of 18 degrees. Now, let me um, let me introduce a little shortcut, and then I will talk about why I did it. So, if you go to any textbook or um, internet site which contains something like a derivation of sine of 18 degrees, you will basically see the following. Um, let's rewrite this in a more algebraic form. 8x cubed minus 4x plus 1 equals to 0, where x is sine of 18 degrees, which, which we would like to find out, right? So what they are saying is, they're saying 8x cubed minus 4x plus 1 equals 2x minus 1 times 4x squared minus uh, plus 2 x minus 1. Now, don't ask how they came with this particular um, equality. Obviously, if you perform the multiplication, you will get this. 2x times 4x squared is 8x cubed. Uh, 2x times 2x is 4x squared but minus 1 and 4x squared gives minus 4x squared, so there is no x squared. Now, 4x uh, would be... Uh, so this is uh, minus 2x and minus 2x, so it's minus 4x, and minus 1 times minus 1 gives you plus 1. So this is true equality, very easy to check. I just multiply directly. Um, now, if you have an equation like this, and the left side is represented as the uh, product of these two, then obviously either this one is equal to zero, or this one is equal to zero, right? That's the only way how the product of two numbers is equal to zero. Either one of them is zero or another. Now, if this is equal to zero, we will get x is equal to one half. Now, sine of 18 degrees cannot be one half. One half is a sine of 30 degrees, if you remember, right? Sine of 30 is one half. So, this is definitely smaller because sine is monotonically increasing function. So, this does not give you the, 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 the solution which you're looking for. However, this quadratic equation does. So, by solving this quadratic equation, you can get the value of uh, 8 minus 2 plus minus square root 4 uh, plus 16, which is equal to... Now, minus is definitely um, not supposed to be considered because it gives the negative result. Now, this is definitely the positive thing. So the only uh, right solution is x is equal to minus 2 plus square root of 20. Uh, uh, 20 is 4 times 5, so uh, I will do this. That's the square root of 20, right? And divided by 8, which is equal to minus 1 plus square root of 5 over 4. And that's the solution. That's the sine of 18 degrees. Now, well, we've got the solution, right? But I had this shortcut magically appeared in front of me. So, the rest of this lecture, I will actually devote to how I came to this particular, uh, yeah, no, how I can come to this particular derivation, um, because the way how I came, I just basically look at it somewhere in the internet or something like this. However, if you don't have any um, a, a idea about how to really derive it yourself, it would be a very interesting lesson which I'm trying to uh, present right now. So, we have defined, actually, we have determined what's the sign, so basically the, the, the problem is solved. So what I'm talking right now is a purely algebraic part of this trigonometric problem, uh, and algebraic part means how can I represent this in this format? 
Okay. So let's scratch all sinuses. Signs, not sinuses, signs. Uh, everything related to trigonometry is finished. Now we are talking about purely algebraic problem. How to represent the polynomial of the third degree as the product of these ones? How can I find it? Now, here is my first logical consideration. Well, obviously, any polynomial like this, if it's equal to zero, you can find solutions using some, again, known formula like Cardano, which was like very, very long time ago invented by this particular um, mathematician by the name Cardano. So you can, you can definitely solve it. Now, another theorem, which was from the um, course uh, on uh, algebraic equations, was that if you have an equation which um, is uh, the like polynomial of nth degree equal to zero, and you know the um, one particular solution, then you can represent this polynomial of nth degree, this particular equation, and you know that x is equal to c is a solution, then you can represent it as x minus c times polynomial, I'll use different letters, b0 x n minus first degree. So, if you don't remember this, um, uh, you can always refer to one of the lectures, um, uh, which is about the, um, these particular equations, where I explain why this is true. So you can always divide the polynomial by x minus the solution of this equation. So I know that the solution exists. This is the polynomial of the third degree. Therefore, it must be represented in this format. Now, since I have presented this problem to you, my, I would say, good guess would be that this representation, which has integer coefficients on the left, must have integer coefficients on the right. Now, if I'm lucky, and I hope I am lucky, and this particular representation does exist, where all the coefficients are integer numbers, then I will try to find it using exactly this consideration, that these are all integers. Because uh, uh, most likely, if it's something much more complicated than this, this problem would not be presented to you. I present the problem which has a nice solution, so if it's not really as nice as this, I would probably not even talk about this. So you can consider it, um, I don't know, some kind of very human quality of, uh, of, of, of these problems. Problems must be human, right? So the humanity, uh, the human side of this problem is that I can always look for this representation as uh, representation with integer coefficients. All right, so let's assume that I don't know this, and I'm looking for this. Where A, B, C, D, and E are integer coefficients. This is my approach to find this particular uh, representation. Now, what can I say from this representation? Well, let's just think about it. what's the coefficient at x cube ac, right? So ac is equal to 8, right? What's the coefficient at x squared? It's bc plus ad. bc plus ad and x squared here is equal to 0, right? doesn't exist. Now, what's the coefficient at x to the first degree? It's a times e. 
plus b times d. And this is equal to minus 4. And what's the coefficient at x to the zeroth degree, which is a constant, it's de. Now, this is a system of 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 equations with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 variables. Well, you can say that, hey, the number of equations must be actually equal to the number of variables, otherwise most likely we'll not be able to find it. Well, true. However, we do have one extra um, consideration. I, I said that I'm looking for integer solutions. Now, that greatly helps to resolve even the system of four equations with five um, unknowns. And here's how. Most important is the last one. You see, de is equal to 1. Now, d and e are integer, right? So how can the product of two integers be equal to 1? Well, we have two cases. Case number 1. b equals 1 and e equals to 1. And case 2, b equals to minus 1 and e equals to minus 1, which already gives us two, from one equation, we already got two uh, unknowns. Well, granted, we have two different cases, which we are going to consider as two different cases. But in each case, we already reduce the system of four equations with five variables to the system of three equations with three variables, right? Because from one equation, we got two variables already. It helps, right? Okay, so let's consider the first case. D and E both are equal to 1. So what do we have? Here, they do not participate, so this remains as is. B is 1, so it's C plus AD is 0. Now, B and E are 1, so it's A plus D equals to minus 4. Okay, this is my system of three equations with three unknowns. Well, first of all, it's much easier, right? Um, now, what can we do about this? Well, the easiest way is probably to resolve it for D and substitute into this thus uh, reducing the system of three equations with three unknown to two equations with two unknowns. So d from, from, from this, d is equal to minus 4 minus a, right? So we substitute to this, and we will have ac is equal to 8, c plus a times d, which is minus 4 minus a, is equal to 0. Well, let's uh, simplify it a little bit. So, AC is equal to 8, and C is equal to, uh, well, it's 4 plus A times A. So it's 4A plus A squared. I think I'm right. All right. I think so. Now we can substitute this to this times a. So what do we have? We have a cube plus four a squared minus 8 equals 0. Hey, we already, we have another cubic equation, right? Well, but here is a very important problem. The original cubic equation had, God knows what kind of um, uh, solutions. Well, I mean, we do know what kind of solutions. It's not integers. Here we are looking for integer solutions. 
And that makes our job much easier. Because if you can remember integers, integer solutions must be among, multiple, uh, among factors of the free um, coefficients, right? So factors are basically 1 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 4. And basically, well, we can try plus minus 8, but that probably won't work. Now, uh, plus minus 8 doesn't really make any sense even to check because it's too big a number. 8 cube is, what, 512. Plus sign or minus sign doesn't matter. We will never be able with 4 times 64 uh, to, to, to bring it to zero. So this is definitely not a solution. Now, one and minus one, we can very easy to check. One means it's one plus four minus four doesn't, uh, doesn't equal to zero. Minus one, this is minus one plus four minus eight also. So that's out. Now, plus two, eight, times mm, 16, no good, minus 2, minus 8, plus 16, minus 8. OK, minus 2 is the root. 4, 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 64. 64 plus, well, another 64, no good, minus 4. So it's minus 64 plus 64, also no good. So, and plus, no. So the only solution is minus 2. So we found an integer solution just by checking what's the factors of the free um, coefficient. So we know that minus 2 is a solution. Fine. We got it. From this, so we know this is minus 2. Um, uh, unfortunately, I wiped out these little equations, so I will repeat it again. AC is equal to 8. Uh, X squared is BC plus AG equals to 0 x to the first degree is ae uh, plus bg equals to minus 4, and be is equal to 1. All right. So we are considering this case, and we found out that a is equal to minus 2. Now, this is 1. This is 1. This is 1. So this is minus 2, so d is also minus 2. So this is minus 2, d is also minus 2. So a times d is 4, so c is minus 4, right? Now this is 1 and this is 1, that's it. Now, let's check. Minus 2x plus 1 times minus 4x squared minus 2x plus 1. So if you will multiply, let's think about again. Minus 2 times minus 4 gives me a coefficient, a coefficient with x cubed, which is minus 2 pi times minus 4 is 8. Correct. Now, um, x squared x squared would be free member by uh, this, so it's minus 4 x squared, and a and g is plus 4, 0 out, so there is no x squared, good. Now, x, it's ax times e, which is minus 2x, and b times gx is also minus 2, so it's minus 4x, okay? And 1 by 1 is 1. So this is a right uh, um, representation. 
Now, if you remember the representation which I uh, which I gave in the first was uh, 2x minus 1 times 4x squared plus 2x minus 1. Now this is actually exactly the same as this one except these coefficients are multiplied by minus 1 and these coefficients are multiplied by minus 1. But since it's product, minus and minus gives you plus, so it's exactly the same as I have here. Now, if I will use minus 1 and minus 1 as B and E, I will have a slightly different system which will result in basically very, very look-alike cubical equation for A, in which case we will have the coefficients with, with an opposite sign. So this would be 2, this would be minus 1, this would be 4, this would be plus 2, and this would be minus 1, which is exactly as I said in the beginning. So we don't really have uh, different representations. It's exactly the same representation the one which I told you, which has, um, so either it's, uh, it's this or both um, multipliers are multiplied by minus 1, which is exactly the same thing. And therefore, I have actually logically came with this particular representation, which represents our cubical equation, and now uh, uh, solving this particular um, cubical equation using this representation is very easy. I said it before, this gives me x is equal to 1 half, which is not good. And the second one, uh, the quadratic equation, gives one of the uh, solutions is positive, and that's exactly what sine of 18 degrees is. Well, well, it's I shouldn't say it's an easy way. Um, but I think it's interesting, and I think it's challenging. And let's not forget that some people who really came up with the problems like that there were some people who really were, you know, smart enough. They realized that you can use certain uh, known formulas and approaches to, to solve this problem. And, um, and the purpose why I'm um, dedicating this particular lecture to this one, one problem is precisely because I would like you to get into the mind of people who were trying to solve the problem. Now, uh, they didn't know how to, to, to get sine of 18 degrees, but they realized that 4 times 18 plus 18 gives you 90 degrees. So they were using this particular peculiarity of 18 degrees. Then, after that, they used the known formulas of uh, double, angle, uh, double angle, and uh, they came up with the cubic equation, the one which involves this particular polynomial of the third degree, which obviously they didn't know how to solve. But they assumed that maybe, just maybe, it has uh, the representation like this with integer coefficients, and they, and they wanted to, um, to basically find out, well, let's try. So they tried, they did exactly the same way as I did, or some other way. I don't really know how they did it. This is something which I came up with. But in any case, you have to have this inquisitive mind. You don't know how to solve this problem. You're just trying to create this solution in your head. Try this way, try that way. I'm not presenting you anything which you can you know, use in the future. But if you will go through problems like this and, 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 and the solutions many, many times, your mind will be tuned to seeking the solution using one of the existing approaches. Um, well, that's it. Try to do it yourself again. That's my general recommendation. And good luck.